Hey, welcome back. It's your boy, Will J. Let's get into some deck brewing shenanigans. Let's get right into it and talk about our featured commander, the crime lord boss of the Obscura family, Rafine the Scheming Seer. Rafine is a 3 mana value 1 4 Sphinx Demon with Flying and Ward 1, and whenever you attack, target attacking creature connives X, where X is the number of attacking creatures. Connive is a new keyword in New Capenna that lets you draw X, discard X, and for each non-land card you discarded, the conniving creature gets X plus 1 plus 1 counters. I think it's a really cool mechanic, and as soon as Rafine was spoiled, I've been excited to build around her. Drawing cards is always fun, discarding cards, a little less fun. But I am a huge fan of card selection mechanics like Scry, Surveil, and now Connive. Therefore, the deck we're gonna be running is something we can call the Rafi the Rafine, the, the Refinery. <laughs> Rafine's unique ability allows us to dig deep into our deck, taking whatever cards we have in hand and refining them into something we'll need to close out the game. We'll go over the usual themes of ramp, removal, and draw, but then we'll also go over other themes of go wide, support, recursion, and something we like to call UVP or utilities, bombs, and pets. Rafine is a 3 drop, so you're gonna wanna load up on your 1 to 2 drop ramp package. You're still likely to play Rafine on turn 3, but that doesn't mean you can't ramp into your turn 5 or turn 6 much quicker. That said, Sword of the Animus is gonna be big for this deck because it lets you net land whenever you attack. And with this deck, you're gonna wanna attack almost every turn. Ornithopter of Paradise is a good 2-drop with the versatility of producing colored mana and being an evasive attacker to trigger Rafine. While colored mana is important to us, Thought Vessel makes the cut because we're gonna be wanting to draw a whole bunch. Ashnod's Altar is a powerful 3-drop that lets you convert your creatures into mana to cast the spells that you've connived into during your post-combat phase. Obscura has a great selection of counter spells and removal, and we don't have to look far from the set. Void Rend can't be countered and destroys any non land permanent. And a counter spell I can't refuse is an offer you can't refuse. It just costs one and it comes from the set, so of course it's the perfect excuse to play it. Another interaction piece that fights in the stack from Yukapena is Obscura Interceptor. It's a 4 mana value 3 one that bounces the spell back to hand and it connives. Now, because we're conniving, Big Game Hunter and Shadowgrange Archfiend are a couple of madness creatures that act as removal that we can play for at a discount. Taking further advantage of the discard effect of connive, we can also run Feast of Sanity. It hits any target so you can shoot down planeswalkers or small utility creatures if you're able to connive even just for like 2 or 3. The big version of this though is Archfiend of Ifnir, which can practically wipe our opponent's boards if you're attacking with a small army. In that same vein, I also like to run Toxrill in my build because yes, it removes creatures in a very oppressive way, but it also replaces your opponent's creatures with 1-1 slugs. And these can attack to trigger a fiend's connive. Lastly, I want to highlight one of my pet cards and a card I wish more people would play, Sat's Will. It's an unloved will, I know, but this removes giant creatures and makes you thralls. Thralls, which again, can trigger a fiend's connive X. Connive is a form of draw, and aside from Rafine, we're gonna be running a few other loot effects. Ledger Shredger is on the uptick right now, price-wise, so if you're lucky enough to crack it in a pack, good for you. It's a 2-drop that lets you connive multiple times in one turn cycle. Thirst for Discovery draws 3, and we can choose to discard 1 or 2 cards depending on our situation. Teferi Master of Time allows you to loot every turn, and it can phase out scary blockers, attackers, or even trigger-based commanders. Faithful Mending is a draw 2, discard 2 spell with flashback, which means if you discard it, you can still cast it later on. This utility from the graveyard is pretty good, which is also why I recommend running Deep Analysis, which we can cast from our graveyard for 2 mana and 3 life to let us draw 2. Commit Memory is also a candidate to be discarded, because the wheel effect can be useful in a pinch. Creatures that help us draw are Grazilax, who lets you attack fearlessly, because you can always bounce back to hand any creature that would die in combat, while also letting you draw if you actually connect. Shakedown Heavy can come down early and Menace makes this guy hard to block. 6 damage can be a lot of life to pay just to prevent one card draw, so your opponents probably will. And when they do so, you get a 6-4 blocker too. Decent. Finally, Dreamcrawler is one of our top curb creatures and it draws you a card when it attacks. But on top of that, it also gets plus 1 plus 0 every time we draw a card. This means all the other card draw effects in our deck, like, I don't know, from Conniving X, can make this guy swing in for a ton, while also incidentally gaining you a lot of life. An unorthodox card that I think fits well with this deck because it's so hungry for card draw is Psychic Possession. It's a 4 mana value enchant opponent that makes us skip our draw step, but we draw whenever that opponent draws. So while skipping our draw step feels bad, if you put this on another player with a good draw engine, like, I don't know, the Simic player, you're essentially gonna be profiting off their engine too. I love this card, and I love it when it fits in the theme that we're running. 
Rafine needs a lot of creatures to trigger a large connive, and so we want to make sure that our board is healthy and full. Court of Grace puts the Monarch into play, but makes you either a 1-1 Spirit or a 4-4 Angel on your upkeep. Bitter Blossom also gives you some tokens at a slow and steady pace, and if this card is too pricey, which might be the case, you can also look at Luminarch's Ascension. Still a little pricey, but it nets you bigger creatures, but also, understandably, draws a lot of heat from the table. Adeline is a crazy card that can flood the board really quickly, and even crazier, she doesn't even need to be the one attacking. She triggers when you attack with any creature, and so you don't need to put her in danger. Call the Copper Coats is another great spell to burst produce a bunch of tokens out of nowhere, and remember, this is an instant, so you can play this at someone's end step to give pseudo haste on these creatures. Rewarding our card draw, Drake Haven lets us create a 2 2 flying Drake if we pay 1 whenever we draw, and a Deer Kraken does the same, albeit it makes 1 1 blue tentacles while also growing itself. We can also run Min Wily Illusionists, which creates illusions whenever we draw our second card each turn. Chasm Skulker is a creature that charges up our draw triggers and can explode in a fury of 1-1 squids when it dies. And Felisa can essentially turn each plus one plus one counter that we get from Connive into 2-1 Inklings when that creature dies. Lastly, a couple of cards I want to highlight are cards that can go wide but also protect us. Grand Crescendo can make X-1-1 citizens, but even when X is zero, it's flexible enough to grant indestructible to our whole squad. And the finisher and beautiful gacha card is Ink Shield. It fogs combat damage and creates 2-1 Inklings for each damage prevented this way. Our board is wide, it's full of little annoying critters that are triggering connive. Let's take advantage of that and give these guys the support they need to close out the game. Cather's Crusade pumps the team up whenever a new creature of ours enters the battlefield, and Drana Liberator of Malakir also pumps the team after she deals her first strike damage. If we're able to get counters on our guys, through connive or some other way, Herald of Secret Streams can make each and every one of them unblockable, which can be a game ender. Or another finisher is Akroma's Will, the more popular will, because it can give the whole team unblockable through protection and also double strike. Now sometimes you haven't set up, and your creatures are just a bunch of 0-1 non-threats. Kami's Obscure Oculus gives one creature unblockable, and remember, Rafine lets one creature connive X. That means you're dumping all those plus one plus one counters from conniving on just one guy. You can still deal a lot of combat damage if you attack with an army of 0-1s while making the one conniving unblockable. On top of supporting our army damage-wise, we also need to support them by making sure that they can survive. Eldrazi Monument gives all our creatures flying and indestructible and protecting them from board wipes. Because we're running tokens, phasing also becomes such a relevant keyword for us, and Guardian of Faith, March of Swirling Mist, and Teferi's Protection all protect our creatures, including tokens, without getting rid of their plus one plus one counters. Now understandably, if Teferi's Protection is too pricey, there are other cards to consider like Unbreakable Formation or the newly printed Change of Plans. Conniving means we're going to be throwing away a lot of cards in the graveyard. Master of Death is a great card to discard because we can always just get it back in our next upkeep. Containment Construct and Oscar Rubbish Reclaimer both let us play cards we've discarded, with the Construct letting us play lands while Oscar lets us cheat on the timing of our spells. Toulouse is interesting and can sometimes feel like a non-bow, but she does store up your cards, which can feel like burst draw when she dies. Unburial Rites has flashback, which means we can discard it and then benefit later on, and Victimize lets us bring two creatures back for just three mana. Obscure Confluence is a versatile card, and getting three creatures back can feel a little vanilla, but the flexibility of giving a creature humility or conniving is why I like it. For UBP, we're adding a few more cards that synergize well with our game plan. Bone Miser can get you creatures, or refund you with card draw, or even give you some mana to cast your instants. Currency Converter is one of my favorite cards from Yuka Pena, and it can net you treasure or an instant speed blocker or haste attacker. Teferi's Ageless Insight or Alhamaret's Archive allow us to draw more, which gives us card advantage, not just selection, when we connive. Strionic Resonator is a generally good card for decks with triggers, and we don't even need to always target Rafine's Connive X. Copying Adeline's token production, Drana's pumping counters, or Felice's Inklings are all really good plays too. A couple of other finishers are Psychosis Crawler, which makes our opponents lose one life whenever we draw a card, and Faith of the Devoted, which makes our opponents lose two life whenever we discard at the cost of one mana. Something you can include as an alternate win con is Approach of the Second Sun. Rafine lets you dig deep with every combat step, and so getting it out of your library seven cards deep doesn't seem like the most impossible task. It does end the game on the spot though, so I wouldn't run it every time in the deck just to keep things a bit fresh. The Refinery is a fairly commander-centric deck in that it relies on Rafine to be its draw and discard engine, but you don't always need to run her out immediately. If you draw token producers first, you could amass the army, then bring in Rafine afterwards to watch the giant attack and trigger connive. I'll be posting the decklist in the description down below, and as usual, you can also check out the other cards I considered but didn't make the cut. So the Refinery clocks in at 10 ramp spells, 10 removal, 9 draw, 11 go wide, 9 support, 7 recursion, 60 BP, and 37 lands. 
And that's it for this episode. Hopefully you found this build fun. It gives you a lot of chances to dig and lots of ways to pull out a win. And if you aren't the one building the deck, maybe you can share this video with a friend who will. At the very least, I hope you can leave a subscribe because it really helped me out. You can also follow me on Moxfield. I'm also called Friends with Ties over there. And until next time, um, stay fine, stay kind, and stay inspired. See ya, pals.